everyone, my name is Lance. This truss bridge project is the ultimate example of the strength of triangles when used in structural engineering. Even though this bridge isn't as flashy as some of my other projects, when it's put to the test, that moment of truth is super exciting. So let me show you how this is built and then I'll show you how to test it. So first, pick out a truss bridge pattern. In general, the more interconnected the design is, the stronger it's going to be, but it will take more materials and more time to build. And for this project, I recommend picking a design that has a flat top. To start the side pieces, I recommend gluing two triangles together like this. Then connect the triangles together with a line of craft sticks on the bottom and on the top, making sure to overlap by at least a half an inch whenever possible. I recommend creating a bridge that's four craft sticks long along the bottom here, but you can make it longer if you want the test to be more challenging. With the frame outlined, it's much easier to fill in your chosen pattern. If you need to shorten one of the craft sticks, an easy way to do that is to grab it with a pair of pliers and then just snap it. Here's a tip, if you're making an intricate design that has lots of overlapping pieces, it can be challenging to layer them one on top of another. For example, if I try to lay this craft stick here, you can see that there's going to be a gap between that stick and the frame. So instead of trying to force this piece onto there, what you can do instead is just flip this over and work on the other side. Okay, one side piece is done. Now create another identical side piece. Next is the bottom of the bridge. First, create a rectangle that's as long as the side pieces. Then fill it in with a pattern that resembles what you chose. One thing to note about the bottom of the bridge is that once the rope is woven through it and it's being tested, the bottom is going to get compressed from the sides like this. So adding some pieces that go directly across can help make it stronger. Okay, all the pieces are finished. Now they just need to be brought together like this. We'll be using these four inch cable ties to attach the pieces together. It's difficult for one person to hold all of the pieces in position and tie the cable tie on all at the same time. So here's what I suggest instead. Keep your pieces flat on your work surface and then loosely tie on a cable tie onto each corner. Then just bring the sides together and tie a cable tie onto each end. Once the bridge is put together, you can go back to those first four cable ties and tighten them up. Continue connecting the bridge pieces together with more cable ties. I recommend adding at least two more cable ties to each side. Then finally, just trim off all of the excess cable tie so it looks a bit better. Okay, the bridge is done. Next, I'm gonna show you how to put it to the test. So first, you'll need two chairs or tables that are equal in height. And then bring them together and place the bridge on it so that the ends of the bridge are overlapping your surface by about two inches on each end. You'll also need a five foot piece of rope or cord that's been tied into a loop. You also may need a carabiner. And lastly, you'll need some way to measure the success of the bridge. I prefer using a digital hanging scale because it's really exciting to see the number go up and up as you're putting weight on it. Okay, to actually start testing, first weave the cord through the bridge like this. I prefer weaving the cord through the bridge like this so that it comes into contact with four points. I used to just hang the rope from the center of the bridge, but I found that the weight would eventually just break the craft sticks. And the solution to that is just to layer more craft sticks onto each other, and that wasn't really teaching much about structural engineering. Instead, by distributing the weight like this, you really get to test the integrity of the entire structure, and not just the material strength of the craft sticks. Anyway, the next step of the testing process is to connect the ends of the loop and this part here with a carabiner. Then attach the hanging scale. And if you're using this particular scale, I recommend putting a loop of rope here so that you have something that you can pull down on. Okay, we're finally ready to test. Turn on the scale and start pulling on it to see how much weight the bridge can hold. This design made it to about 28 pounds before it broke. Not too bad. So it doesn't have to end there. I've had some students put a ton of work into a bridge design that could hold over 100 pounds. These bridge designs are a good place to start, but after you've tested your bridge, I strongly encourage you to deviate from those and think about how to make your bridge uniquely strong. Definitely take the time to think about where it broke, how to fix it, 
how to make the whole bridge even stronger, and then go in for another test. One quick note, if you don't want to use hot glue, you can use regular white glue to assemble the pieces. Because all the pieces are built flat, you can use liquid glue to construct the sides and the bottom, wait for it to dry, and then assemble it. This is great if you're doing this project with younger kids. The only problem is that if you test and the bridge breaks, it just takes a while to fix and then dry before you can test again. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.